so fighting against the injustice and the atrocities of british on the peasants is his idea here people took to alcohol there was no hygiene in the society there was no education there were lot of untouchables all these were there in the society that is in champaran planters were ordered to pay back 25% of whatever uh, is paid to them back to the peasants land that is suitable for farming that is called as the arable land A very warm welcome to all the young minds of class 12 CBSE. I am Dr. Shalini, your English teacher at Prep School. Today we are going to discuss about one of the lessons from your Flamingo, that is Indigo. It's a very interesting poem, little historical uh, events also involved in this. Very interesting one, so let us understand what it is about. What is there in today's session? What are we going to understand? We are going to learn about the author first at the outset. Then we have the theme of this story, then we have this summary, then we will have the new words and phrases that are used in this story. Okay. So let us begin our session today with the introduction of the author. Okay. So he is uh, Louis Fisher. Okay. So he was born in Philadelphia. Okay. So that's a place he was born there. And he served as a volunteer in British Army. Okay, so he was a British personnel and he worked there uh, for a few years. Fisher actually made his career as a journalist. Okay, he was writing for the New York Times a newspaper. Okay, so here he has uh, interviewed Mahatma Gandhi ji and he has uh, recorded his accounts on that. Okay, so let us understand the theme of this story. So what is there in this lesson? So this lesson tells us about how Gandhi ji struggled for underprivileged peasants. He fought for those underprivileged peasants, how he fought for their rights. Okay, so fighting against the injustice and the atrocities of British on the peasants is his idea here. Okay, so Gandhi ji actually makes the peasants aware of their rights. So they were not at all aware of their rights. They didn't know what they should ask for. Gandhi ji made it clear to them. Okay, Gandhi ji's intention was very clear. It was not only political that was uh, his intention, but there was some economic intention also there. And also mainly he had this social intention. That means he wanted to make the peasants socially stable. That is the main intention that he had behind this uh, in these incidents that are recorded in this story. Let me tell you what those incidents are. He actually aimed to provide education, health and hygiene to those people who are there in this story, who come across in this story. Okay, so what is it all about? I'm just talking about the theme. I'm not able to make out what it is. Yes, let us go understand the story, what it is. Okay, so to begin with, let us understand few incidents that are there. There are many characters that we come across in this story. Okay, so let us begin. The story is based on the interview taken by Louis Fisher with Mahatma Gandhi. So what happened? Louis Fisher, he was in uh, India and he wanted to uh, talk to Mahatma Gandhi. He went there, he talks to Mahatma Gandhi when Mahatma Gandhi uh, is supporting the peasants when they are protesting against the crop indigo. They were forced to grow this crop and uh, peasants were protesting against it. So that time Louis Fisher has, had gone to Mahatma Gandhi ji. He stayed with him, he interviewed and he talks about how Mahatma Gandhi ji could make it into a full-fledged protest. Okay, so let us understand many things over here. Louis Fisher met Gandhi ji in 1942 at his ashram at Sevagram. So Sevagram, there was one ashram that was run by Mahatma Gandhi ji. So there Louis Fisher meets Mahatma Gandhi ji in the year 1942 in order to talk about the Champaran protest. That is, he wants to talk about the protests that were the, carried over by the peasants against the growth of this crop indigo. Fine. So, lesson speaks about Gandhiji's struggle with prominent leaders. There were many uh, prominent leaders like uh, Babu Rajendra Prasad and uh, Kriplani and all these. Okay. So, Mahatma Gandhiji, he just delegates with them and he brings a very uh, wide range to this protest. So, that is what this lesson talks about. So, Louis Fisher has recorded all these incidents in this lesson. Fine. The manner in which he safeguards the sharecroppers from the atrocities of landlords. So, that is what this uh, lesson talks about. The atrocities that were done on the peasants by the uh, British uh, army officers. Okay. So, all that is recorded in this lesson. 
fine the share croppers i need to tell you who are share croppers share croppers are those people like peasants only they take a land on rent and they grow uh, one crop in one part of the uh, land and uh, they have to give the whole thing they are uh, spoken like they are the uh, people who are sharing the land okay so they had to um, give the whole uh, produce to the army officer that is the british officers okay so these peasants who share the land are called as share croppers okay so british make these uh, peasants grow indigo forcefully indigo is such a crop wherein it actually uh, gives you the blue color okay which is natural fine these peasants were uh, forcefully uh, made to grow the indigo okay since it was on high demand indigo was on high demand because uh, it used to give that blue color naturally there was a high demand in the britain market so uh, these people were made to grow uh, that very forcefully and that actually took away all the nutrients of the earth that is the reason the peasants didn't want to grow and also peasants were paid very meager amount when they gave these crops to the uh, britishers so what they did they didn't want to grow but few protested few did not protest okay so they were actually forced to grow this indigo this crop was uh, bought at a very low price by the landlords landlords nothing but british officers okay so they bought it in at a very low price and they sold it at a very high price in the market in the britain in britain okay the landlords used to have a lot of profit that is the reason the peasants didn't want to grow whatever they the hard work they put in their effort and all used to go waste because they never used to get complete award for whatever they are working okay so they were bought at a very low price the village was very unhygienic champaran village was actually very unhygienic there were lot of slums and all there was no cleanliness at all people took to alcohol they were into consumption of alcohol they were not into good habits they always took bad way because they didn't know what to do they didn't know how to lead a proper life okay so that's the reason they resorted to alcohol consumption and there were many untouchables also so these untouchables were actually called harijan by gandhi ji okay so there were lot of untouchables there and that only made the society the society was very unhygienic the whole city was unhygienic because there was no education and also these untouchables were unaware of their rights so this was the scenario that was there in that day's society okay so now to move on let us understand little more so there was devastating famine also during that time so what happened during that famine so crops and all were lost whatever effort the peasants had put in had all gone in vain so there was a famine that actually brought a lot of hardships to the peasants lives okay so the tax started increasing though they were not able to uh, give the produce to their landlords they had to pay the tax that was really hurting the peasants okay so when they have not received any money how would they pay tax that is very difficult isn't it so tax was increasing the tax levied by the british government was too much too exorbitant so the peasants were not able to pay that okay so rajkumar shukla who was a very uh, prominent leader among the peasants there so he went and tried meeting gandhi ji he wanted to bring all these hardships of peasants to the notice of gandhi ji so he went to meet gandhi ji but it was not possible for him to meet him why because gandhi ji was very busy during that time but he made sure he had enough patience to wait for gandhi ji and he want he brought it in uh, brought it to the notice of gandhi ji somehow he convinced gandhi ji to come to champaran as i told you the uh, scenario of champaran how was it there people took to alcohol there was no hygiene in the society there was no education there were lot of untouchables all these were there in the society that is in champaran okay so here somehow rajkumar shukla who was a leader among the untouchable among the uh, village people so he went there and he convinced gandhi ji to visit champaran he was sure that everybody will follow gandhi ji's ways of uh, thinking he was very sure that everybody would follow the path laid by gandhi ji so he went and convinced gandhi ji to visit champaran so gandhi ji he agreed and he starts to champaran and en route means on the way he visits professor kriplani so who is professor kriplani he was a professor in one of the colleges there okay so on the way to champaran he visits him and he actually had already sent a telegram to gandhi ji about the the plight of peasants the 
peasants whatever the hardships they are uh, facing so that was already informed to gandhi ji rajkumar shukla also added on to that so gandhi ji thought i must visit champaran and on the way he goes and visits uh, professor kriplani who explains to him the plight of peasants there okay so once he gets the first hand information about the uh, plight of peasants there okay so babu rajendra prasad who was an advocate he was a very influential person okay so he he had high level contacts and he was very influential and he was an advocate okay so gandhi ji also wanted to meet uh, babu rajendra prasad but since he was out of station he was not able to meet him gandhi ji went to meet him but he was out of station but he could not meet him but gandhi ji what did he do he did not sit idle what what was the wonderful work he did he just went around met the other advocates and he collected all the information about the plight of peasants that was happening uh, in that champaran okay so he learned that british were very unkind towards the peasants what were they doing they were actually uh, levying high taxes and also they were forcing people to grow indigo so there were other issues also involved there so what are the other issues we will understand in the coming slide so the rule was that what was the actual rule why were they supposed to uh, give it to the britishers how much were they supposed to give it to the british officers so indigo whatever uh, was grown over there it had to be grown in 15% of the land so that is the share okay so even if you grow whole of indigo 15% will go to british officers any crop you grow uh, the 15% of that uh, land has to have indigo okay so that should should go to the british officers this is what the rule was during that time so that 15% of uh, whatever produced was there that had to be given to the british officer so that was the rule over there then what happened what was the next development synthetic indigo was already available in germany okay so this is natural what they are growing but there was availability of synthetic indigo also in germany market and the cultivation of indigo was stopped okay so here the 15% whatever they are growing the share croppers whatever uh, growth they are making here that 15% that was actually stopped okay the, the reason being that synthetic indigo was already available in the markets of germany then what happened gandhi ji wanted to meet rajendra prasad but uh, as he was out of station he met all the other lawyers and the peasants who were there okay so though the indigo cultivation was stopped they had to pay the tax that was another rule which actually burdened the peasants okay so gandhi ji collects the testimony of the peasants testimony means the feedback whatever they are facing they give it themselves they come and talk and they tell the information so testimony means they giving their uh, account of life by themselves so that is called as testimony gandhi ji collects the testimony of peasants and finally lieutenant governor appoints a commission for inquiry he takes all this and goes to the lieutenant governor okay he uh, takes all the information and he says yes i am appointing a commission for enquiry of what is going on okay so then gandhi ji was the sole representative sole means only one okay it is different from s o u l soul okay soul is something you have that atma in, in you this soul is only one okay so gandhi ji was the only person who represented the uh, peasants but the people who represented british rule they were many there okay so the strength did not match but gandhi ji he was very strong because he went with the testimony of the present so he was confident enough that he would get the tax waived off he would get the peasants out of this hardship okay so he goes there he was the only representative who visits the british officers so gandhi ji was told to leave champaran but he refused okay so gandhi ji uh, since he went with all the testimony and all he was told to leave champaran immediately because they were scared that he would uh, bring all the peasants together and he would start a protest so he was told to to leave the place but he did not agree he refused he said i will stay in champaran and i am going to bring justice to my people okay you must recall that even gandhi ji was an 
advocate okay so he knew what has to be done according to law so he is doing this lawfully so now he was told to leave but he did not he refused and again he was called by the court the commission when they inquired they said gandhi ji to leave the place but he refused so that time since he went against the law is what the british officers thought he was summoned by the court now it's a very good chance for gandhi ji to present the testimony so what did he do he made use of the chance very well he went to the court and again he was all alone here but then what happened peasants came in support of him peasants came in a large number look at the beauty of his uh, protest he was a very wonderful leader he just gave a call and everybody came together okay call in the sense he didn't even ask them to come together he just represented them yes a leader is the one who represents the people right so he went as a representative and everyone followed him as his supporters okay so peasants came in a very large number then what happens again rajendra prasad was already back by now and rajendra prasad comes with his influential friends so he also comes with his friends to visit the court then what happens actually now inquiry happens properly the court listens to what the peasants had to say okay so the peasants began to protest outside the court only they start protesting now the court has to listen to what the peasants protest is about okay so the british fell behind gandhi ji to restore peace so everywhere there was chaos now gandhi ji had to give a call to stop the protest the court understood that the british rulers understood that and they fell behind gandhi ji to Uh, stop the protest to give a call for the peasants to stop the protest okay so inquiry was conducted now the court has to listen to it the court directs the inquiry commission to conduct a proper inquiry so now inquiry was conducted properly then planters were found guilty so the uh, commission hears to both the sides and finally the planters that is the landlords were actually found guilty they were found that they were doing the wrong doing okay so they were found guilty and planters were ordered to pay back 25% of whatever uh, is paid to them back to the peasants so now the fine was levied on the planters so peasants were very happy for that okay so gandhi ji uh, since gandhi ji was the sole representative there and peasants did not go and talk there they were not allowed to talk there gandhi ji whatever offer is made by the commission that is the 25% payment back to the peasants gandhi ji agrees to it why why does he agree for that because somehow he wanted to free the share croppers out of this contract so when they pay back the 25% back to the peasants they were out of the contract the synthetic indigo is already available in the market so the commission listens to that also and finally the contract will be ended so that is what was the decision made there okay so here they would be out of this contract so gandhi ji agrees for that 25% payback offer there okay with this the peasants they get back their money okay so now they become little stable their condition will uh, become better slightly okay so now what gandhi ji does first thing he does is he opens schools in champaran why is that when people are educated when people are understand what their rights are they can lead a better life so he finds school as the very important medium the best medium very effective medium for that matter to in order to uh, know their make them aware of their rights okay he opens schools in champaran so who are the teachers gandhi ji himself taught gandhi ji's son teaches there kasturba also takes care of few things there so there were volunteers who were teaching including gandhi ji and his son they were teaching over there in that school which he opens in champaran okay so he they all start teaching in their schools and also kasturba gandhi ji's wife she takes care of hygiene she makes sure the whole society is hygienic okay they make them aware of hygiene they make them aware of importance of health 
okay so all these they make them aware and they are building a very healthy society okay so gandhi ji taught the lesson of self reliance over there how you can be self reliant that means you get some education then of course you can be self reliant you believe in yourself that is nothing but today's atmanirbhar bharat okay so make in india self reliance all these okay so they are all on the same path so it was initiated by gandhi ji in those days okay so this was the lesson about indigo okay hope you have understood it clearly so there are few interaction that is done with uh, gandhi ji that is recorded here by the author okay so gandhi ji tells how he initiated the departure of british from india so this whole lesson till we till now whatever summary we learned that is all recorded in this lesson okay so later the, this story was told to uh, fisher by gandhi ji so this interaction is recorded in this story okay so gandhi ji tells how he started the first steps he took for uh, to send british away from out of india okay so that is what he has told over there he interacts with the author and he tells about it and also the champaran incident made gandhi ji feel that british are not needed in india so what does it mean were british required in india no not at all peasants are actually self reliant okay so peasants can grow their own crops and they can uh, sell it in the market and they can be self reliant it is not only because of indigo that they were surviving okay so it was because of their uh, capacity they were surviving that is what he taught the people over there that is the reason he started teaching them their rights okay so this interaction between gandhi ji and fisher is recorded in this lesson okay so all together so you have already understood the summary of this okay so yes let us move on to the next session that is the new words and phrases that are used in this lesson okay i would want you to go through the lesson so you come across these words okay so watch the lecture and then go through the lesson so that it will be easy for you to understand okay so convention it is actually agreement okay convention they call for a convention right some meeting or something like that so that is called that is meaning uh, that means a uh, an agreement okay so share croppers as i already told you a tenant farmer okay so he gives a part of his uh, crop as a rent okay so they are growing in, like suppose you are the landlord and i am growing few crops in your uh, uh, some crop in your land then i give 15% of my yield to you as a rent okay i don't pay uh, extra money for that but i am paying it through kind that means the uh, crop only okay so that is called as share cropping then it is resolute that means determined okay so gandhi ji was actually determined to get justice for the peasants okay so that is what there it is used there okay so then we have this conpor so this is actually a british name anglicized name for the city kanpur okay so the conpor is actually pronounced as kanpur in india okay so then tenacity it is determination again so the tenacity uh, was possessed by gandhi ji we say so he was determined to get some justice for peasants over there so there comes tenacity then haunches means the thighs okay so your thighs uh, that is the uh, upper part of the knee so that is haunches that is thighs fine yomen a man who cultivates a small piece of land okay yomen means a person who is who has taken a small piece of land in order to cultivate that okay so then at last we have pestered pester somebody is uh, bothering or harassing you pester means so suppose you are you are not doing something and your mom pesters you that means she is bothering you in uh, like she is uh, make forcing you to do it okay so sometimes it becomes very uncomfortable also okay so this is called as pestering so these were the new words that were used over there so let us see few more shided means to scold or to criticize okay then we have arable arable land okay land that is suitable for farming that is called as the arable land okay then we have irksam irksam means irritating okay so something that is irksam the behavior of uh, british officers was actually irksam okay that was irritating gandhi ji then we have this thugs that is cheats the people who cheat they are called as thug okay so then we have fourth with fourth with is nothing but immediately at once okay vehement uh, some strong feeling is shown there okay or maybe some force it can be in a positive or a negative way also it can be uh, some intense feeling that is being expressed 
okay so then we have protracted lasting for a long time okay or longer than expected or usual okay protracted means moves on continuously right the angles move on continuously so similarly this also something that lasts for a long time is the meaning of that then we have pacifist peacemaker pacify pacifist so pacifying means to make peace a person who does it is called as a pacifier okay so this is all for today so we have understood the summary of indigo uh, lesson today so what i want you to do is please go through the lesson this is really a wonderful lesson read all the minute details so when we uh, come to the live class i would like to discuss this with you okay please come prepared for the class come with a book and a pencil so that your doubts can be clarified easily okay so let us meet again very shortly in the live class so till then keep learning let us meet again bye bye take care